Okay, welcome back to The Effect. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about the different pathways that we can walk on a causal diagram. Any way that you can walk along a causal diagram that goes from a treatment to an outcome uh, will be a reason why those two variables are related to each other. Uh, in the data, some of those pathways are going to be pathways that we want to preserve, that we want to identify the effects of, right? You, those are our good pathways. Uh, usually those are all the path, the front door paths, the paths that go only from our treatment to our outcome. So on this diagram, we may be going from wine to lifespan or from wine to lifespan to drugs. We also have bad paths that we need to shut down in order to identify our causal effect of interest. Uh, so on this diagram, again, going from wine to health to lifespan would be a bad path. If just naturally healthy people might be able to drink more wine and also will live longer for other reasons, that's fine. That's a reason why we might observe that people who are drinking more wine live longer, but that's not an effect of wine on lifespan. So we've got these good paths, we've got these bad paths. We want to isolate just the good paths. How can we do that? Well. We've got a lot of terminology here, but I'm going to bring in one more set of ways of categorizing paths. Open and closed. An open path is a pathway along which all the variables on the path are allowed to vary in your sample. Okay, what do I mean by that? So for example, on our wine and lifespan graph, uh, if we have just a bunch of data of people, and all the, all the people, well, we have some people who drink more wine, some people who drink less, some people who are healthier, some people who are less healthy, some people who are live longer, some people who don't. There's variation in all of those variables, right? So because there's variation in every variable on the pathway, it is open, right? So that, that, that pathway, because it's open, because there's variation at all the points, it is allowed to affect our result, right? Because there, all those variables have variation, it is a reason why uh, wine and lifespan might be related to each other. Now, a pathway that is closed is a pathway that, where there's at least one variable along the path that has no variation. In it. So, for example, taking, taking that same pathway that I just talked about, let's say that I either statistically adjusted for health, I controlled for health, or perhaps I picked a, data, a sample of people in which everybody is naturally healthy. Okay? In that case, there's no variation in health anymore, right? Either I've removed all the variation with a statistical adjustment, a control variable for health, perhaps, or I simply selected a data set in which there is no variation in health, so there's nothing to look at, right? If I, I, I'd say, hey, everybody in this data set is healthy. There's no variation in health anymore. When I do that, when there's no variation in a variable, then all the pathways that that variable sits on become closed down. They are closed, which means that they can no longer induce a relationship uh, between our two variables of interest because uh, there's no variation anymore, right? We can no longer say, hey, one of the reasons why we see in our data that wine and lifespan are related to each other is that naturally healthy people are going to drink more and live longer. We can't say that anymore because in our sample, there are no more naturally healthy people and less naturally healthy people. We got rid of all the less naturally healthy people or we adjusted uh, things so that, that that effect went away. So in our data, that pathway would be closed down and also all the other pathways that health sits on. Uh, so the pathway wine to income to U1 to health to lifespan, that would also be shut down and we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So we have these bad pathways that we want to shut down. We want to make them closed so that they no longer are inducing some sort of relationship in our data that we don't think counts as part of our research question. I already mentioned the two main ways that we can actually do this. Uh, one is conditioning or controlling for a variable. There are a number of statistical methods that you can do that if you include a control variable, so for example, let's say I measure people's health and I measure people's income, I can then adjust for health and income to make the data act as though there's no variation in those variables. I say, hey, here's the relationship of income on wine, here's the effect of relationship in income and lifespan. I'm gonna take out that relationship so that there's no longer any influence of income on either of those things, shutting the pathway down. I can also select a sample in which there is no variation. Uh, so for example, I pick a data set that only has healthy people in it. Uh, uh, in that case, there's no variation in that variable left either. Uh, those are the two main ways that we can shut pathways down. And if we do it right, we can identify our effect of interest. So let's look at a list of pathways from this particular diagram. So if you go through and carefully calculate out all the different ways that you can walk from wine to lifespan, here's the list that you come up with. Uh, so we have six pathways of interest. Uh, now, two of these are front door paths, and I think I'm, I'm going to say that these are, these are our good paths. These are the paths that we want to count for the reason why wine might affect your lifespan. Wine could affect lifespan directly. It could also affect lifespan through affecting the amount of drugs that you take. We also have four 
bad paths. These are all, all also happen to be backdoor paths with, with an arrow pointing towards wine. Uh, wine and lifespan are related because income affects both of them. That's that third pathway there. Uh, could, they could be related because health affects both of them. That's the fifth pathway there. It could also be related because income and health affect those two things, and those two things are related to each other. That's the fourth and sixth pathways there. Let's say that I then control for income. I calculate your income, I then adjust for the relationship between income and all the other variables in the data. Uh, so if I do that, then I'm gonna close down any pathway that income sits on. So income is sitting on the third, fourth, and sixth pathways here, and so those become closed. They will no longer affect our relationship. And so if we then look in the data, after adjusting for income, uh, we will only have our front door paths and this fifth path here. Uh, so we would no longer have income causing a relationship between lifespan and wine that should not be there. If we want to then fully identify the effect that we're interested in, we need to shut down all the backdoor paths. Uh, well, we would also need to control for health as well, because you can see there's no other way to shut down that fifth path without controlling for health. That's the only variable on there. There's nothing else that we could be controlling for to shut it down. If we do that, we are only left with two pathways, our front door paths, our good paths, wine to lifespan and wine to drugs to lifespan. This process also lets us know that we should not control for drugs, right? This is important to think about. It feels like, okay, drugs is clearly related to this stuff. Maybe I should be controlling for it because it's related. Uh, I want to control for everything I can, right? No, there are things that you don't want to control for. And this diagram shows us that controlling for drugs would be a bad idea uh, because it would shut down a front door path. It would take away part of the real effect that we want to count there, right? We want it to count. If wine causes your lifespan to go up or down because it affects the amount of drugs that you take, that would be something that I would say would be part of my research question. I think that counts. So I'm going to leave it in. I'm not going to control for drugs. That would be what's called post-treatment bias, controlling for something that is affected by your treatment. There's one type of variable that sort of messes things up what we're talking about here, uh, and that is colliders. A collider is a variable on a diagram where both arrows on a pathway are pointing towards that variable, right? So for example, maybe here's your treatment, here's your outcome variable, and uh, they both happen to cause this variable over here. Let's call it C, that's our collider. So there is now a pathway that we can walk from treatment to C to outcome over here. And yet this pathway is closed already. If you have a collider on a pathway, that pathway is pre-closed. It is already shutting down the variation that you need in order to make sure that that pathway is closed. It's not gonna cause you a problem. Yes, this would be a backdoor pathway, but it, it's closed already because there's a collider on it. If there's a collider anywhere on your pathway, that is if there's a, anywhere on your pathway where both the arrows on the path are pointing towards the same variable, that pathway is pre-closed and you don't need to worry about it. Except unless you control for something on that pathway. If you control for the collider C, this pathway opens back up and it suddenly becomes a problem again. And so at the very least, if you see a pathway on your diagram with a collider on it, where both of the arrows are pointing towards the same arrow, towards the same variable, First of all, you don't need to worry about it unless you control for that variable. So that's another variable that you don't want to control for, which is important to think about because sometimes we control for things by accident, perhaps by selecting a particular sample. So for example, let's say that we're interested in the effect of getting tutoring in high school on your intelligence, let's say. So we get some measure of intelligence, some measure of being tutored in high school, um, and uh, great, let's let's imagine that we've randomized tutoring so it's, it's fine, we, we don't need to help backdoor paths, except um, one thing that both of those might affect is going to college. Getting tutoring in, in high school might help you get into college, regardless of your intelligence, and also your intelligence would help you get into college. So that's fine, no problem. But what if we only sample college students? What if we decide, we, hey, we want to know the effect of high school tutoring on your, on your uh, intelligence, and we're going to get a sample of college students because they're easy to survey. Well, in that case, we have now controlled for college. We controlled for going to college, which opens this pathway back up. In the sample of students who go to college, well, what do you have? You have smart people uh, who maybe didn't need tutoring in, to, in, in order to get in. We have people who got in because they got tutored but weren't very smart otherwise. Uh, and so it's gonna look in our data like those like tutoring and intelligence are negatively related to each other, even if perhaps they weren't related at all in the first place. What do we have in the data? We have people who are uh, both tutored and smart, Right, that's fine, you get into college. But we also have people who got into college because they were tutored even though they weren't very smart. And we got people who got into college because they were smart even though they didn't get tutored. So we get a negative relationship there. Controlling for the collider opens the pathway back up. So to summarize all this, we have pathways that we can walk along our diagram, right? Every pathway that we want to count for our research question, that's good. We want to keep that open. If we 
close it down for some reason, that would be a bad thing. We want to close down all the backdoor paths in order to identify the effect we are interested in. We can do this by conditioning for variables that are on those paths. That, that removes all the variation on the path. If at least one variable on the path has no variation in it, we control for it, we adjust for it, we uh, select a sample where there's no variation, that pathway shuts down. It becomes closed and we no longer need to worry about it. Uh, this also means that we don't want to shut down a pathway by controlling for something if it's on a front door path that we want to count. It's on a good path. There are also some variables that make a path be pre-closed, colliders. If a variable has both arrows pointing at it on a pathway, uh, then it is pre-closed. Remember, this is, a, this is a property of the variable on the pathway. It's not that a variable is always a collider everywhere. It's just on a certain pathway it might be a collider if both arrows are pointing at it. That pathway is pre-closed if it has a collider on it, unless you control for that variable either by adjusting for it when you shouldn't, or picking a sample uh, that all that only has one value of that variable, then you open that pathway back up and it can cause your, your effect to no longer be identified once again. All right, that's it. Thank you.